Well, this was inevitable. And I knew it from day one. Hey guys, it's Twily X360 Trent. And if you're watching this video, I really hope you'll stay till the very end of it. Because if you read the title to this video, you probably already know what this is about. And it's ultimately going to be a vent, but I'm honestly making this because I want people to hear and relate. If they can. That and... I'm actually hoping things will be better, or I start feeling better, after I make this video. So, my lockdown story. Here it is. So, as we all know, the lockdown pretty much universally started around mid-March. What you need to know about me at this point in time is that things were moderately okay. And then things just got better by February due to the fact that I went to Disney World. And even when I was in Disney World, I already knew that this COVID-19 thing was already existent. I just didn't think it would get as bad as it did though. And by March, things were still going on easy street. And then it happened. We were locked down in quarantine. I'll admit, I was pissed. One thing that definitely made me angry about it is that this didn't happen with any other pandemic we had before like Ebola or Zika, or even West African sleeping disease at one point. Although, in all fairness, I think we should call this COVID-19 except the coronavirus because, from what I understand, there have been many coronaviruses throughout the years. Anyway, back to the topic of my lockdown story. It just got me upset that we're doing it for this and not for anything else. Or were those just not as effective in the States? I actually still don't know now. To say that the first few days were rough was a bit of an understatement. And even though I knew right from the start that the mainstream news media was going to be toxic and I should avoid it like the plague. It was actually harder for me to ignore it because it just kept finding this way to creep up on me. And that may be because I was just already getting depressed. But I need to say this, as depressing as it was getting at the time, I completely ignored it. Like, I pretended that these thoughts were non-existent. Hell, I didn't even act angry that day, although I really, really was. These factors combined with the other aspects I'm about to tell you at the beginning of this whole lockdown, uh, later in the video. My conclusion of how I responded when this whole thing started is... <sighs> I have no other way to say it, I, I just... It was the worst way possible. I literally responded to the beginning of this quarantine in the worst way possible. Pretending that my own problems, anger, sadness, and confusion was just non-existent. And I feel like I did that at the time because... Either I was just going along so easy without even having to worry about this virus for quite a while, or I just generally wanted to be happy and thought it was an actual good idea by not actually doing it and avoiding all of these problems I was having. And I... I absolutely hate 
that I did that now. If any of you guys were hurt by me doing this, I am unbelievably sorry that I did it. And I think now is as good a time as any to get to that, and why I ultimately had to face these problems eventually. One thing that even my oblivious mind to avoid all my problems was in, even realized, is that even if I was okay in ignoring everything about this, other people definitely wouldn't be. Give March 2020 me that. At least he didn't completely exclude the fear factor from the rest of the world. Because it was going to happen. Someone, probably a majority of people in the world, were going to be afraid of this virus pandemic. And speaking of which, I have seen other people do it in the opposite direction as well. I actually heard there's a reason why Italy became the most infected country outside of China. And you'll have to look that up in your own time. Because I don't want this video to be taken out of context. As for how my friends were going through this... Okay, I'm not gonna bring up everything or everyone because privacy reasons. But do note that they got pretty dark. Uh, not helping is that we were also dealing with pretty much the same drama behind the scenes. Which left quite a few of us both mentally and emotionally exhausted. Kind of like I am now. It was actually so hard for quite a few of us to be happy. And just have a call to enjoy ourselves that it was actually hard to forget about past events and how foolish we were in those past events yeah 2018 and yeah some mistakes we made in 2019 that's how hard this was and that's how sad this was the other thing i noticed at least in one of the group chats i'm in Online activity in general in that group has massively decreased, uh, thus leaving the group's leader in a place of frustration, which in turn left me frustrated because I didn't want them to feel bad. I mean, I may not have experienced creating my own group chat, but I get where this person's anger and frustration came from. No one's using the chat, barely anyone's active in it, and yet you created this chat just for them. You want it to be used for something. You want to have calls in it. You want this chat to mean something. Whatever the case, whatever the purpose of this chat was, it clearly wasn't doing it. To this day, I don't exactly know why their online activity has decreased. Part of me thinks it's simply because the quarantine and lockdown was just as depressing to them as it was to me. And because of how depressing the topic is, I feel like they ultimately didn't talk about anything in the group because they didn't want to make everything depressing. Keep in mind that this is my own speculation, my own theory. I don't know if this is the case, but it seems like it's the case. That no one wanted to upset anyone any further because of how depressing things were at the time. And yes, it did start sometime as early as late March and early April. So during this time, I was still being stupid and ignoring my own problems and trying very very hard to avoid any drama with my friends so i didn't talk about anything either though i did try many and i mean many things to try and get people talking again or at least something interesting for people to talk about and here comes the third part to what led me to even more problems 
even during the very first few days of this virus pandemic lockdown. Making content to make people happy. Now, I'm not trying to say that trying to make content to make people happy is bad. It's really, really not. It's better than good. Like, it's one of the most admirable acts I could ever see from an entertainer. The problem on my end is that I try doing this too much. To the point where it did hurt me and others that I cared about. But before I get to any of that, I'll start with my issues first, considering I'm the one who made this stuff. The first of which was when I tried making more episodes for Sisterly Conspiracy. When I was in Disney World, back in February, I did say I wanted to get straight back to filming more episodes of Sisterly Conspiracy. Remember this video right here? I promised in that video, Sisterly Trailer, that I was going to deliver parts 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 of Sisterly Conspiracy by April. And this is something I had long planned before the trailer even came out. Which is why all the footage in the trailer was footage you never saw of the episodes until they were released. And I'm pretty sure right there you can already start to see the problems with this. I was essentially giving myself a deadline to film six five-minute videos of original content and release them weekly. And this is also ultimately why I gave you parts 5 through 7 instead of parts 5 through 10. Nearly half of what I expected to finish by April. And yes, this turned out to be a huge mistake. I suffered major creative burnout by the time number 7 was done. But by this point, my stupidity logic changed from I'm ignoring all the depressing problems about myself to If I make my friends happy, I will be happy. And... Well, okay, that may be true. I do get really happy when I'm actually able to please my friends, acquaintances, fans, and idols, and many more people. But that doesn't make the process of filming these things any less exhausting. I still have to hold my hands up in front of a green screen, which does cause major shoulder pain if I hold them up for too long. And then, as soon as I started releasing the videos, they did get good reception. Not massive succession, but good succession. And that sadly influenced this logic more. And I wanted to improve my content on a massive scale by that point. By this point, everything revolved around what I created, how good it was written, how optimistic and positive it was. Will this create a positive impact on people's lives and distract them from the dark times that are happening now? Will this take the fear away? Will this actually make people laugh? Something that's kind of impossible for me. It was literally every detail. And that's when the voice in my head basically started talking to me in this way too. Look how happy you're making people. This is how you cure your fear. This is how you stop thinking about the coronavirus. This is how you help other people with the same. But it wasn't. And just by looking back, I can tell that my friends were happy from this. But obviously, making a positively optimistic video will not be the one thing that completely removes their fear from the coronavirus. And so I just kept pushing myself further and further down this rabbit hole. And the voice basically started saying, you're not good enough. You need to try harder. Put more effort into your stuff. 
And almost every day my friends were either upset, angry, confused, sad, over the pandemic or some other issue that I mostly related to and tried my damnest to try and understand. And I think that part of me at the time showed hard, like everyone saw right through me and saw this whole facade I made for myself. And I think that's what hurt them. I was under this stupid logic and my friends were just looking at me saying, come on, really Trent, you're better than this. But it's not like I didn't listen to my friends every now and then. And there's definitely one group I can credit this to the most. The Peace Family. Created by Dore Art Dreams Aspie and Angry Beavers 1997 or Ryan. I was talking in there for a while with Aspen, Ryan, Bella, and some of her friends, Bree and Grimjaws. And I even invited Rosie into this group at one point. And they absolutely love her, and as a result, she has fallen into this creative renaissance on her DeviantArt page. The Peace family mostly calmed my nerves because of one little factor. It's because, unlike me, they actually dealt with their problems. They didn't ignore it completely. They dealt with their problems, vented, and and actually addressed how fearful of an environment they were in at this point in time. And then they started getting better. Then they started laughing to take the fear away. And I think the other factor to this is that they did it together. They were working together through this as a team. By this point in time, it's early April, and I only occasionally vented, and not in a big way either. In worst case scenarios, I would keep what I was going through vague and mysterious, so no one would actually put all the pieces together and think, hey, there's something really, really wrong with you. Why don't you talk about it? And I would do everything to try and ignore these problems. Whenever my friends weren't around, I'd usually either watch Futurama or Welcome to the Wayne. And later, when it was Star Wars Day, I even watched all three movies on Laserdisc. And you might also be thinking, this is a long time to be frustrated and angry without any therapist. Well, I did have therapist. It's just, one, I could only contact them every Tuesday. Two... Even after I did vent to them in a somewhat reasonable way, that still didn't make me better because I still didn't take the situation seriously like I should have. I'm also going to say right now that there's a reason why I didn't tell any of my friends, my acquaintances, or fans, my family, or even myself that I was in this deep state of hurt. A big reason is that I want to deal with my own problems, and I really don't want to drag anyone into my messes or any of these situations involving me. And if me being hurt does hurt you in some way, then I don't want to tell anyone about that. The second reason is because I normally don't think very highly of myself at all. I even joke about it and pretty much everyone knows that I don't. Even though I do have to acknowledge that people do like my stuff. I mean, like I said, when I was making content to make people happy, even going as far as playing an old PS1 game, People were giving me compliments, like they were saying how happy they were that I was doing this stuff to keep their spirits up and these videos had a positive impact on them throughout this dark time. But at some point I started to think that people were lying to me or they were saying these positive compliments and they didn't really mean it or it was over exaggerated or whatever. Guys, do you know that old saying, words can't hurt you if you won't let them? 
However, people do tend to forget that it works the same way with positive words, but in the opposite sense. The pinnacle of this is when my confidence was already low enough and I was in a Skype call with some of my friends while one of them was playing a game and this person generally just wanted this call to happen for us to have a good time, relax, and pretty much take our mind off the COVID-19 thing, kind of like how I was already doing. But one of my acquaintances was also there. I don't necessarily know what to call them right now, but... And I won't reveal any details about this person because I don't want them to feel bad. But this acquaintance left the call mostly because I was in it, according to them. If that sounds harsh, it isn't really. There's one more detail to add. Later, one of my closer friends told me that this acquaintance felt really bad that they gave away this bad implication and that they didn't even mean to make me feel upset or anything of that arc. And yes, I felt the exact same way. I didn't want to upset this person either, and I didn't want to be the reason why this person left. To this day, I don't know why it happened, but it's not important for me to figure out. This was happening on top of other things that was going on in my friend's life. One of them of which was when a user in one of the group chats did something so reprehensible and so bad that we did basically have to ban this person and no longer associate with them. And it was heartbreaking to say the least because a lot of us were close to this person at one point. I also heard of a different situation that ultimately ended up in the same fate with another one of my friends. And still, still, I just kept telling myself, don't worry about this, be happy. And yet I didn't even address the situation or fully explained how bad I felt. How dead I was at this point. Easter Sunday passed. And still, I was in this same situation, just continually denying myself. Even after I saw myself and many of my friends lose someone close to them. Even after witnessing someone grossly misinterpreting a very harmless action. Even after wanting to make art for someone to make them happy and ultimately didn't go in the best way possible. It was just anything to keep my mind off of this whole situation. And I should mention by this point, COVID was the least of my concerns. No, the bulk of my concerns came from everything else. I mean, sure, COVID was very, very big up there, but it was nothing compared to all of this that I witnessed behind the scenes. And finally, May started, and that is when I finally told myself to stop. I needed to talk about this. I needed time to process all of this. I need to address this, and then actually make something right for my friends, acquaintances, and many people, because I clearly was suffering from massive creative burnout. I was in no position to create anything new yet, let alone something enjoyable. But this is where I can say brighter days are coming. Because like I said earlier, not everything that happened during this lockdown was bad for me. Mr. Enter released two great videos, one being better than the other, about this whole pandemic thing, and I think they're very sound and centralized. And they're actually on his main YouTube channel, you don't need to look for any other ones. The decision to take a month-long break actually didn't just come from me. 
It came from many of my friends, including one of them on DeviantArt, who announced they'd be taking a break. When I finally started addressing myself and how sad I was, I found many of my friends, acquaintances, and others were in the same situation that I was very easily able to relate to, and I couldn't even believe how good that felt. And like I said, the Peace family did definitely keep my spirits up and gave me a positive impact. That call I had that night with that acquaintance actually didn't affect me that hard, and it seems like it didn't affect them that much either. And as for creative potential ideas, back in April, me and Heartpaw Phoenix were talking about the possibility of what a sixth the musical project of us could look like. Meaning that, yes, maybe a sixth the musical recast animatic is possible, but not entirely. And obviously, the quarantine is finally ending in my area of the world. By May 15th, we'll most likely be free again. We'll gradually start getting back to normal, but not entirely yet. Seeing big brony name voice actors like Pinky Rose and Brittany Ackerman actually liking and enjoying my videos was just an absolute treat to see. I was able to get in touch with Lightspeed again, and right now, Lightspeed's doing great. Myself and others actually had a fun call with him not too long ago. And group activity, it's slowly starting to increase, and I mean really, really slowly. Because despite the lack of online activity in that group, and others, I did have some very fun and amazing calls in those groups. On top of many more. And yes, some people did outright leave because of their lack of activity. But they might come back to the group, if they want to come back. And I hope everyone does find something interesting and positive to talk about soon. After we've all dealt with how depressing this crazy time was, of course. So, so, yeah, brighter days are coming. And to my friends, fans, acquaintances, and everyone else. Once again, you are all an amazing inspiration, and I just hope that I was to you as well. Even with my garbage tier logic, I hope that in those small positive moments, I inspired something positive in you to help you get through this. And looking back according to a lot of people, it seems I have. And yeah, I know I'm sounding cheesy at this point, but I will say this. Regardless if it was you guys who helped me or if it was my own decision, the point is I finally got to that conclusion. A very positive conclusion. And I hope I improve for the best and make things right after this whole thing is over. I hope you all take care, and I'll see you all soon.